Hey there! Today I'm hitting up a couple thrift stores looking for some profit. I'm going to be sharing with you what I pick up and what I do not pick up from these different thrift stores. So this is a Goodwill. I actually hit the same Goodwill on two different days. And so thrift store number one, technically first visit. Uh, I'm looking at the electronics section. This is an area I've been trying to dive into a little more. And first thing I find is this Dymo label maker. They want $5.99 for it. And if it were new, it's selling for about 30 bucks, but even used, it's selling for about $19. So I think this is going to definitely be a good pickup for me because that's something that I can make about a $10 profit on if I've got it working and the cords and everything like that. I had to dig around and find the cords, honestly. The next thing I see is this speaker bar. It's an on speaker bar and I believe this is like a Walmart brand and I know that there are some from this brand that can sell for a good profit but this one in particular is really not a good pickup I mean they wanted I think it was like $12 what was it on that one but it was just not going to be a good pickup for me on this one so this is one that I left behind the next thing I see is this phone system they want seven dollars and 59 cents for it and it's pretty much I mean it looks like it's used but but maybe barely used it's got two handsets and chargers it's got the manual and everything and so for seven dollars and 59 cents the three the ones that have three with the three phones were selling for about 60 70 dollars new I think I'm gonna probably ask maybe anywhere between 20 and 40 bucks. So I should be getting somewhere between a 10 and 15, 17 dollar profit on that. So pretty good pickup on that one as well. I thought this would be a good pickup. Goodness knows I need one of these like cooling stands for my computer because it gets pretty hot. But they want $13.59 for this. It's one of those like if your computer, it's a chill mat, yeah. But these are really, I mean, used, they're only selling for maybe like ten dollars so they're asking more at the goodwill than what this is actually even selling for used so unfortunately this is one of those things that i am definitely leaving behind it looks like if it's new it can sell for about 30 bucks but still with for 15 dollars um or 13 59 on that i was like i don't think that that's something that i really want to pick up What's something you like picking up in the electronics section? This is an area that I am, you know, just recently getting more and more into and enjoying it, really. I didn't think I would be, but it's kind of a treasure hunt over here. Things that I never thought about before or saw before. So these are some speakers. They're Panasonic, uh, but some of the cords were kind of messed up, and I don't know how to fix that or test that, so I left that behind. This looks like it's part of a surround sound system. But there was only one, and again, like, I don't know how I'm going to test that. But that's something that, you know, you're always having to learn and try new things. So this was an answering machine. I thought, you know, sometimes people are wanting these vintage or, oh, you know, old-timey technologies. But no, this was not going to be a good pickup for me, so I had to stay behind. All right, here we are. We're on visit number two. It's actually the same thrift store, but just a second trip a few days later. And the first thing I spy is this drum, well, part of a drum kit. And they want 30 bucks a piece on these drums. Now, a full drum set, this particular one, can sell anywhere from like 250, 300 bucks um, locally. But for these two pieces, 30 bucks a piece, I had to leave it behind. Now, this chair, this is, they wanted $12.99 for this chair. I've sold chairs that are like this mid century modern style. And I thought, you know what, this kind of looks like that style, but it, it wasn't. It had a, even still had a barcode from, I don't know, linens and things or something. But if you see these mid-century modern, like, molded plastic chairs, they can sell for a really good amount of money. Next up, this was my early foray into trying to learn about golf clubs. And uh, this, again, is an area that I'm not passionate about. But you know what, as a reseller, you don't have to be passionate about it. You just have to find money. So I went ahead and made myself a video and I put it out for everybody else because I wanted to research what which ones I should be looking up and which ones I should go look for. Uh, I didn't find any on that day. But what I did find was this Easton bat. And it turns out that this is a softball bat. They wanted $5.49 for it. And it had this like black stuff on it this it, it didn't wipe off like you couldn't just wash it off I really had to put my elbow grease into it 
But this brand, Easton, baseball bats, softball bats, they can sell for a really good profit. So I'm probably going to make about $35 profit on this. I took it home. I made a short even of me cleaning it up. And I've got it listed for $50 right now. And I'm waiting for my buyer on it. But I don't think it's going to take too long because I've had a couple of offers. Uh, but I did not accept them because they were a little lower than what I wanted. But yeah, it took just a little time to clean that up. For the longest time, like... I didn't like picking things up that I had to put any, any effort into because, I mean, let's face it, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say lazy, but I'd rather go the easy route. And so I, I didn't, I don't know, like shoes and things like that, but I've started cleaning shoes, cleaning sports gear. If it's worth the money, then, you know, it's worth the time and effort that it can take to, to make it look nice and get more profit out of it. I pick up this, it's a kid's, like, baseball mitt. I could... I kind of guessed it wasn't going to be worth a lot. They went $5.49. But since I'm still learning about sports equipment, I thought I'm going to go ahead and look it up. This one, however, really is not worth picking up. But I did pick up a baseball mitt the other day, or it's a softball mitt technically. And I bought it the other day, I think for about 4 or $5. And I have it uplisted for 40 bucks. Again, also have had a couple of offers on it, but have not taken... You know, since I just listed it, I thought, you know, let me go ahead and wait and see if I can get a better offer for it. Then the next thing I see, this is something that's totally out of my realm. Welcome to Texas. We don't have skiing here at all, uh, but people still go on ski trips and people don't have to buy these here in Texas. They can buy them and I can ship them to wherever they are. So these are some ski boots. And they're asking $15.49 for them. They look like they're in pretty good shape. And I saw some just like these that had sold for around $55. So for that price and with that return on investment, 55 bucks on those, I think that's going to be a definite pickup because that is something that I can make about a $30 profit on when they sell. So yes, for sure, on these ski boots. Again, you don't even have to know about the stuff. As long as you can look it up and see if it makes a profit, then pick it up. I mean, the more you know, the better, but you know, this is how you learn. You just pick things up and educate yourself. So the next thing I find, this turns out to be a cricket helmet. So it's in pretty rough shape, but cricket is also a sport that I am not super familiar with, but I can look up the brand. I can look up what kind of things they sell for, what kind of prices I should say, what kind of prices they sell for. And see if it's something that is worth me buying. So I get on my, my eBay app here and I look it up, look at my solds. The new ones can sell for a good amount, but this, you know, kind of used and banged up, I'd probably only be able to get about 10 bucks, 11 bucks for it. They want $5.49 for this. So I think because of the condition of it, it's really banged up. Poor guy probably got hit in the head with a cricket, cricket ball, cricket mallet. What do you call it? Um, so this is going to be a pass on this cricket helmet, but there is more, is more, there are more treasures to be found. The next area that I hit is kind of like the outdoors and appliance, small appliance section. And I stop here on these two garden spreaders, the big gray one and the little green one. I like to pick those up at garage sales if I can, because the little, like the green one I can sell for 30 bucks the bigger one I could probably sell for about 40 50 depending on the condition of it they ask way too much for them at the um, at the Goodwills I mean they want 20 bucks or so on them and I just can't same thing with this shampoo where it's pretty nice but I'm like there's not really a way for me to test it there and I picked up this cord we sell a lot of appliances and this is a dryer cord sometimes we don't have cords for some of our appliances that we get that we flip um i don't end up buying this one because it's got some damage there and i'm like oh, i don't want to mess with the electrical problems so i left the cord. Well, it's still in my car now but i don't end up getting it but then i spy something you see me picking up the pace uh oh here we go picking up the pace picking up the pace i spy a table you see this kid's wooden table i love selling kids furniture like this these tables and chairs this one is a melissa and doug i've sold ikea ones kids craft i mean all different kinds this one they want how much is it on each 
each chair. So they, see so here, I'm checking the price, Melissa and Doug. So it's $21.50 for the four chairs and the table. And so I'm looking these up and like new on Amazon, they're selling for about $110. I've sold Melissa and Doug ones for $75. I've sold Ikea ones, depending on the condition for 50 plus here, I'm doing the math because they want $350 per each chair. And then they want how much for it? $750 for the table. So it's $21.50 for the all the whole set. So I'm like, <laughs> I start putting it in my cart. I'm like, I can't get this on my cart quick enough. Um, and then I realized like, no, I'm going to need help. I can't get this all in my cart. So yeah, there's one that sold for 75 bucks. These are all on Facebook marketplace. So you can go on Facebook marketplace and see what kinds of things are selling locally. So if you see these Ikea chairs and tables, kids craft, I mean, and that's an Ikea one that sold for 50 bucks. Here's another one that sold for 75 people like that. So that's a $53 profit right there. So look, I'm like, I just realized I can't, I can't, I can't get them all in here. I'm going to need help. So I have to go get a, um, an employee to help, help me market so that I can have it up front when I check out. All right. So thrift store number three, well, technically two, but the third dry, uh, stop off anyway. So this is a Harley Davidson pack of Valentine's, which I thought was pretty cool. However, when I looked them up, they just weren't selling for very much. So I ended up leaving those behind. Yeah, I mean, the profit on those was just going to be a few dollars. So it really wasn't worth me picking them up to flip. So this is an area in the thrift store that I really like. It's just kind of jam-packed with all kinds of stuff. It's sort of a catch-all area for maybe just things I don't know where else to put them. But I often find really, really good stuff in here. So it really does feel like a, a dig, a treasure dig when I'm in this area. I mean, just all kinds of random stuff is thrown in here. That looks like a wig or doll hair. I'm not even sure. So digging through, I'm like wine skins and what is that? Some kind of installation kit, some kind of car installation kit. Um... Yeah, and just party supplies, things like that. I always like looking for like the flat wrapping paper, not on the tube, because the flat wrapping paper, a lot of crafters like to use that, and sometimes they can sell. I've sold it. There's been a sheet that I have sold for $34, so it's always worth checking it out because there's all kinds of little treasures in here that they maybe just don't know what they are, what to, like I say, how to categorize them. So the next thing I see is this calculator. I'm like, no, this isn't really going to be, I mean, they want $350 for this thing, but it's not really worth picking up. I mean, I know that I know it and you know it, that there's calculators that are worth money. I'm looking at this because I'm like, we're trying to budget things and we need something, but I, I needed a notebook and not that. So it's a good place to look. But there are things like day timers you can get here, planners, journals, notebooks. I mean, and this is kind of cute too, but um, I left that behind. I should have scanned it. I don't know why I didn't scan that one. I did scan all those plates down. Well, not I scanned one of those plate sets down there, but they really weren't worth picking up either. So looking through, I'm just going to show you this one shelf apparently. And there it looks like a camera bag sitting there that maybe somebody dropped off. But then I see this Ikea thing. Thing, I didn't know what it was yet. So it was a little clock. And Ikea has partnered with some different designers to make things for their, for Ikea. Um, they wanted $3.49 for this clock. I couldn't find a sold on this one, um, but there are Ikea clocks that have sold for a lot of money. I end up not getting it because the plastic felt like it was deteriorating and it was like really, really sticky. Have you ever come across that before? Where it's just like super tacky? And I didn't know how to clean that or if it's even possible to clean that kind of deterioration when the plastic starts turning sticky. I really liked this tote too with the gate. I have a thing for gators. Um, but they want $15.49 for it. So it goes right back on the shelf. Even if I like it, uh, yeah, that's kind of nuts. I know I was, I was in a, one of the Facebook groups, uh, for thrifting and whatnot. And people are talking a lot about how much the thrift stores are raising their prices and I'm noticing it too. I know you guys are as well. So we just have to, having to be more strategic about how we're going to find inventory. So 
maybe checking out some different thrift stores, hitting up garage sales when you can, the outlets. Uh, yeah, throw out some other ideas. I mean, freebie sites, thrifting your house. I just did a video about that. Trying to find different places to find inventory. I know someone commented on another one of my videos that they're finding stuff at Walmart clearance that they're able to flip for a better profit than used stuff that they're finding at the thrift store. So that's something that I might end up going and looking at because, I mean, if that's a good place to find inventory, then why not? It's a good tip. So then I spy this set of sheets. It's a queen slash full. And this is Jonathan Adler, who actually makes stuff that people like buying. I haven't seen a whole lot of the sheet sets, but there are other houseware items by Jonathan Adler called Happy Chick that if you see, you know, it's worth looking up. So they wanted $15.49 for this. And honestly, I'm like, you know, maybe I should have picked it up just for our, you know, our guest bedroom because we have a queen set there. And it's a pretty nice looking set, but um, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. So with the solds that I saw, I mean, it looked like it would be maybe only about an $8 profit, which is still, you know, decent. I mean, as far as things are, you know, trying to sell things to make, generally I try to make at least $5. Of course, I would love to always make way more profit than that. But for the moment, I decided that I would just go ahead and leave it behind because I didn't want to spend the $15 up front to make an $8 profit. If you enjoy videos like these, I'm linking a playlist of Thrift With Me's right here. And this is a video that YouTube thinks that you will enjoy. As you can see, there's some other items in my cart here, but I'm gonna dive into some of those in my next thrifting ride along. So make sure you have hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of these things that I'm sharing with you. I'll talk to you on the next one, bye.